I'm Sarah El Malay. I'm a voice actor in games, and I also do labor advocacy and event organizing, such as being the awards uh, director and co-host for Indicate. So the awards this fall, it'll be me. It'll be I'll be back. I'll be back, being real silly and goofy and full of love. Um, that's kind of the the feeling of the show every year. Um, it'll be me and my wonderful co-host Asher Volmer, who you may know uh, as the developer of Threes. Um, he's also incredibly charming and savvy and funny. Um, and it will be, I believe, October 11th, the Friday, the Friday of Indiecade, which is October 10th through 12th, right, at the Santa Monica College uh, Center for Media and Design. And it'll be great. We're going to work really, really hard to bring the awards to you so that um, so that we can get it on the internet um, as smoothly as possible so that folks, even who aren't in the room, will be able to enjoy it and to celebrate these wonderful games. What do you love about Indiecade? Okay, I'll start with Selfishly. Selfishly, I love Indiecade because it fills up my inspiration meter, to use a game metaphor, um, for the entire year. I come to reconnect with the sort of boundless creativity and possibility, just the sheer innovation and surprise um, possible within games, um, to meet people who are passionate and open-hearted and vulnerable and, and driven um, because they're the most, most wonderful people I know. Um, yeah, and truly coming and seeing the games here and meeting these folks f fills me with joy and reconnects me to the sense of purpose and, and expansiveness um, that is why I focus on games as an actor and as a person um, in life. How did you get involved with Indicate? I started attending in 2010. Um, I think that was my first year. And then I, or maybe 2011. And then I, I think Sam Roberts, the wonderful delightful Sam Roberts asked me to be Game Maker Relations in 2014. And so I did that first for the E3 exhibit here, this one, and then I did it for the main festival also. Um, and then from there, I think I moved on to being responsible for a programming tent. So I had a sponsored programming tent and making sure that that went smoothly and all our sponsors were happy with the talks that they wanted to have given. Um, and then after that, I think, was when I started um, directing and kind of the first year was also producing, which was a lot and co-hosting the awards. Um, and so I've been doing that ever since. Seen any highlights at the E3 booth? This year, like every year, um, the games are so varied. That's the other thing that I love about it is that you can look forward to every year um, the variety of games, the kinds of games, whole new types of games being invented um, and blended, different, the borders between media or uh, mediums, mediums, media. Uh, being destroyed and, and re rebuilt and and played with, um, so I mean just just looking at something like dialect, uh, which I which is so exciting to me. This uh, it's a tabletop uh, role playing game about the birth and death of languages, um, and you see a lot of loss of languages throughout the world as as kind of people assimilate and spread, and, and languages become more samey. Um, and so a game that models that and recreates it kind of within your group of, um, of constructing one together and having it this, be this precious in-group thing that then kind of fades a little bit as you kind of go throughout your lives and don't have everyone to share it with all the time. I think that's amazing. And then right next to that, you have something like, uh, is it Speaking Simulator? Speaking Simulator is so funny. It's so funny. And it combines um, uh, sort of the, the beloved kind of indie genre of um, funny physics, kind of like super difficult, kind of a Quap-esque thing, but for speaking, um, and just sort of the difficult coordination of that uh, with some really funny writing, really, really, really funny writing um, and dialogue. I'll bring actors through and like my agents through, and with the indies, they're always shocked at how funny and like good the writing is, and that makes the you see their eyes light up, and they're like, I want to say those things. Um, so yeah, those are just two of the examples that I saw here, um, and, and things like those games will certainly be on offer in the fall. Any advice for future game voice actors? So I actually got into voice acting a really unusual way for people who do game voiceover usually, um, which is normally they fall kind of into it sideways from animation, um, but I decided from the get-go that I wanted to be doing games. Um, and so I started by networking with developers. I came to Indicate. That was the big thing, is I met developers um, where they live. I played their games. Um, indies are very um, frequently in charge of casting. I mean, they're a one-man band, or one woman, or one everyone <laughs> um, kind of shop. So um, unlike in AAA casting, where you have to find the casting director and like navigate this whole thing of like, who do I talk to to kind of get in there? If you come to Indicate and shake a developer's hand, you're talking to the person who could cast you in their next thing. Um, and so that was really my way in. Um, I did indies out of my home studio in New York um, well before I moved to Los Angeles and started doing more AAA. Um, so that's kind of my one tip is like meet developers. 
How can people find you and your work? You can find me on Twitter at at Selmale, which is S-E-L-M-A-L-E-H. Um, currently, I am working on a lot of things. After Party is coming out very soon. Super stoked for After Party. I'm in that. A couple other games I can't talk about yet. I'm also, next week is GameDev.World, uh, which is another conference. It's free. It's live streamed. It's totally international. There are speakers, like 30-something spe speakers from around the world speaking in their native language, eight different languages of the world, and then live translated back out into those eight languages so everyone can talk to and meet and hear from everyone. Um, it's really ambitious. It's the first thing of its kind. I'm hoping it comes off without a hitch. Um, what else? And then, yeah, I'm also uh, working really hard to to promote awareness and um, engagement with the low budget contract for actors. So that um, one, of my, one of my big passions was getting um, was joining the union, my, the actors' union, SAG after myself as an actor, um, to join my peers in, in the sort of um, professional community and kind of uh, enjoy the protections that the union pr provides. Um, but also not stop working on little baby indie games because they're, like I said, they're my inspiration. So um, and that's true, I think, for many actors. So finding a solution that uh, a new contract that will allow small games to hire pro professional union actors was really important to me. So now. We we have that. It's the low budget contract. It's got uh, for it's for any game that has a budget cap um, of uh, so under 1.5 million. Um, and all the actors that I talk to about it who work in games are extremely excited to be able to work with with indie folks. So um, so that's another thing to keep an eye out for. Please feel free to ask me any questions about that on Twitter and keep your eyes peeled for it. Um, really excited about that. So thanks. <laughs>